Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Olaulu Adada and this is the Becoming Lovely podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today I have a special guest and I can't wait for you to see this content. Unfortunately, I didn't catch all of the best quality content, but we still had it recorded over Zoom. So you'll be watching a Zoom recording of my interview with Tewa Onosonya, amazing, amazing woman. And we're talking about mindset styling okay um please 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 if you enjoy it make sure you comment below like share subscribe and keep the conversation going about your mindset and the things that you know that you're working on in your mind um to essentially do hard things welcome 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 to the becoming lovely podcast i am your host olaulu adada and this is the becoming lovely podcast um thank you so much for joining today i'm sure that you are going to enjoy this episode and i have a very special guest with me today because we're going to be speaking about mindset what else do we want to do when it when it comes to beginning a new year and thinking of how to really achieve our goals and become a better version of ourselves. So I'm going to let my guest introduce herself because I know I won't do it justice. Over to you, Tara. Thank you so much for inviting me onto the show. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So as Laulu said, my name is Tewa Onosoya and um, I am an entrepreneur and a mindset stylist. So I wear quite a number of hats. Um, yes, I am a pharmacologist um, by training. I have a degree in pharmacology um, and I ventured into the entrepreneurial world, world about 19 years ago. Well, it's going to be 19 years in September. So um, as an entrepreneur, I run a magazine. Well, I own a magazine called Exquisite Magazine, which is a fashion and lifestyle magazine that inspires confidence and style in women. I am also a cervical cancer prevention advocate. So we're all about, so we, we have a foundation called the IMAC Foundation, which is all about raising awareness for cervical cancer and getting people screened and also offering free screenings to women in less um, privileged areas um, or less privileged, so to speak. And I'm also a woman empowerment advocate. So I have another foundation called the Eloy Awards Foundation, which is all about celebrating women of excellence in different fields and empowering women. I am an author <laughs> yes. and a mindset stylist. As a mindset stylist, I am essentially a mindset coach, but I prefer to call myself a mindset stylist so that people, I want people to understand the fact that just as you pick your clothes and your makeup and your accessories, ties, watches, whatever shoes to look good on the outside, you are supposed to pick and choose your thoughts so you feel good on the inside. So, you know, styling, styling your mind is just like helping you restyle your mind to pick the, you know, the positive thoughts that are in line with where you want to go. So that's me as a, as a mindset stylist. So I'm a mindset coach, <laughs> if you want me to put it in those terms. And I have been, so I've been in business for 18 years. I've been a mindset stylist for about, since 2012. So that's about what, eight years or more? Yeah. And um, I'm married with two kids. I don't know if I should call them kids because they're 18 <laughs> and 15. And 15 this it's month. I prefer teenager. <laughs> I know, right? Or young adults. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm a mother as well. And, um, and I'm all about, um, you know, working towards my goal of making a huge impact in this world. Mm. So help me God. So that's me in a, in a quick nutshell. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we have to give you all your accolades. We're bowing. <laughs> thank, <you. laughs> thank, um, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Um, I know that you are a very busy woman, so it is a privilege to be able to speak to you for this short amount of time and literally just hear from you about um, the hard things that you've done. Um, so as you know, this is the um, Kingdom Women Do Hard Things series. Um, so on this series, we're going to be talking about how Kingdom Women have achieved um, and being able to succeed 
through doing hard things. Um, and one of the things you said is that you're a mindset coach or a mindset stylist, or you are a you almost help people design, redesign their minds. And I love that because so many of us don't know how to do the hard work. So we're gonna delve into that. But just before we go there, I wanna give you some shot fire questions. Uh, so whatever comes to your mind first, let me know. Uh, we'll start easy, sunrise or sunset? Sunset. <laughs> Hey, love that. Do you drink? Yeah. Sorry? Do you drink alcohol? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Prosecco or champagne? Champagne for the game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, live band or DJ? Live band. Okay. okay. I don't mind live band. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Um, theater or cinema? Cinema. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, favorite song to relax to? Whoa, um, any meditation tune, actually. <laughs> okay, so like lo fi beats or no, yeah. something soothing. Okay, I love that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Love that. Uh -huh. Love that. Yeah. All right, so we've warmed up. We've warmed up. Welcome to the podcast once again. Um, I have a few questions for you because, as you've said, you've you've been in this for about eighteen years. You've been doing entrepreneurial work. You've been able to establish yourself as the founder of a very successful magazine and award ceremony for icons um, in Nigeria and across the world. So I just want you to give us a bit of understanding about how that journey started. Um, how did you get here today? And what was the what was the switch in your mindset that helped you start this journey that have brought you to here today? Right. Okay. Thank you. So um, I started my journey, first of all, working for a few pharmaceutical industries as a pharmacologist, so as a clinical data manager. And yeah. I never for the life of me thought I would be doing what I'm doing right now. Yeah. I just, you know, pharmacology, work in the pharmaceutical industry, help create a few drugs to, you know, solve the, the you know, diseases in, in humanity and things like that. I didn't really think I was going to be doing what I'm, I didn't, I never actually thought I was going to be doing what I'm doing now. Wow. But at the back of that, I've always been a fashionable person and I've always written. I started writing when I was about eight. So I've written, you know, different novels that I wrote in exercise books and I read a lot as well. And I'm a, I'm a magazine junkie, so to speak. So I thought all of those were just, you know, part of being me as in my hobbies, you know, what I love doing and things like that. That. Yeah. I didn't know that it was going to eventually lead to what I would be doing in real life. Yeah. So, um, you know, on my pharmacology, on my, you know, clinical data management journey, there was one day I used to live in Tilbury. Um, this was about almost 20 or 22 years ago. And I went to the supermarket one day looking for my magazines, which were Glamour, Beauty, you know, um, Pride, um, Hair and Beauty, Vogue, all those kind of magazines, Marie Claire. And I didn't find the pride and the hair, black hair and beauty ones. Mm. So it really bothered me. And on my way home that day, something just said to me that instead of complaining about it, do something about it. And mm. for the life of me, I don't know where that came from, but that was like a, 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 a loud voice that just jolted mm. me into taking the next step that I took then. So when I got home that day, very excited, I was thinking to myself, okay, you love fashion, you love beauty, you know, you can write, why don't you start your own magazine? And then there were only, you know, Pride was the only lifestyle magazine. And then there was hair, black hair and beauty. And then there was another one called hair and beauty. So they were like, maybe just three magazines for women of color. And that's yeah. how Exquisite started. I got home, made a few phone calls. And this is what I now realized on my mindset, um, mindset coaching journey, that once you make a decision, the universe conspires to make everything available to you. Because mm -hmm. once I made that decision of running a magazine, I was speaking to different people. They were like, oh, I love writing. I'd write for you for free. Oh, I'm a photographer. I'd photo you know, I'll do your photographs for free. Oh, I'm a this, I'm a that. And that's how we put the first issue together. 
we found it, I found a photographer that was in Leeds. So we drove all the way to Leeds, me and my, and my sister. Yeah, my sister was, doing, you know, was my first cover of the magazine. So what I wanted the magazine to, to be about was about, you know, inspiring people that whatever it is you studied at university doesn't have to be it for the rest of your life. You yeah. could, you know, evolve into something else. I'm using the word evolve now, but that wasn't the word then. It was just, <laughs> you, could be, you could be anybody, you know, you could be in any vocation that you choose to. And yeah. then my, my sister is a lawyer by training, but then she used to do interior design. Uh -huh. So I thought, you know, who best to put on the cover, how you transition from being a lawyer to interior design. So we drove all the way to Leeds to do this photo shoot. And trust me, everything just came together. One yeah. of my friend's husband is a graphics designer. He designed the magazine. He put me through to, you know, about all the things that we needed to do. And then, one day I went into WH Smith and guess what book I found? How to start a magazine. <laughs> no joke, literally. I still have that book till today. So I'm like, really and truly, once we make a decision mm -hmm. that this is what we want to do, everything works in our favor, but we just have to do that work first of making that decision that, okay, this is what I want to achieve. This is what I want to do. So that's how Exquisite Magazine started. And I say this to everybody that, you know, as you grow older, you know, living in this beautiful life, we evolve because we're human beings, we're constantly being and we're becoming. So as you're becoming, as you're growing older, different things will start coming into play. Because when I started Exquisite Magazine, it was just about the magazine, you know, for women of color. Then we mm -hmm. decided to launch it in Nigeria. Then we realized that a lot of women in Nigeria didn't know about cervical cancer. Then we evolved into that. We started using that platform to raise awareness for cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then eventually we realized that, you know, the way the culture, well, I'm, I'm going to say was, because I don't want to say that it still is. The way the culture was, is that, you know, men are celebrated more than women and women are doing exceptionally well in different fields. That's how the Eloy Awards started as well. So we're evolving into different things. And then now <laughs> I'm a mindset stylist just from, <laughs> you know, evolving and growing with the things I was doing and the things I was experiencing as well. And the things that I saw that I was doing that were working for me. And I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna keep this secret to myself. I wanna share it with the world. So yeah. I've evolved to all the different hats I now wear. That's, <laughs> that's essentially how it all started. <laughs> So I love what you said there. You said it was the decision. And then after that, everything started rolling into place. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes we we struggle to be, get to get ourselves to a resolve. Um, have you always just had this really strong sense of self-belief or was it something that you had to um, because I, I speak to different people and some people will say, you know, I've always just had this belief in myself and belief in the ability to manifest and and carry out vision and some people say well I don't know who I am I'm not resolved about this so how do I even believe and decide when I'm not sure so have you always had that as almost a gift from God or has it been something that you've trained yourself on so I'm going to say this, that I am very, very, in fact, extremely blessed to have been, you know, to have been blessed with a, with a, with a mindset of I can do anything I set my mind to. And I say that because this, you know, this, this attribute was instilled in me by my parents, right. you know, always telling us that we can do whatever it is we wanted to do in life. We could become whatever it is we wanted to become. So I always had that. But in saying that, one mountain will, you know, another higher mountain will require you to have another, you know, set of beliefs, so to speak. So as you grow older, as you become, you will still get that, you know, jittery feeling and you're like, you know, can I do this? Can I not? You will still get that because even till now, I still get that when I want to, you know, pursue a bigger goal, higher goals. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's something that you also develop over time. But I'm lucky to have that foundation where I can, you know, where I have been able to build on. Okay. And one of the, and it's one of the things that helped me when I started, you know, when I started my entrepreneur journey, because I knew nothing about business. I'm a, you know, I'm a science student. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was from a science background. 
So I had to now throw myself into the world of business, into the world of, you know, putting proper structures into place, running a business, running a magazine. I didn't even know the first thing about publishing as well. But one thing that was, one thing I had going for me was the fact that I believed in myself. So a lot of the life experiences that I am, you know, running with right now, I learned on the job. Yeah. Just by believing in myself and working through it. And then bringing people in that, you know, that could coach me and could help me on my journey of, you know, of, on my journey of life. So, you know, yes, I have the background, but we all have to develop that, you know, it has to be built and it has to be, you know, it has to grow stronger and, you know, you have to strengthen yourself as well. That is why we all must keep learning. Okay. Um, so there was a foundation, a belief system, a sense of I can do. Um, yeah powerful so building on top of that once a person decides and because you're a mindset stylist let me know if this is correct or not once a person decides on that foundation i can do um yeah. things you would naturally begin to draw and, and fall into circumstances and scenarios that would build and educate you for the journey that you want to go on or have decided to is that correct yeah mm -hmm. that's um, perfectly correct so talk to me a little bit more about the jittery feelings or the that I'm not sure, because I think especially in society um, as women, there are lots of things we've been told we cannot do or we're not allowed to do. And thank God we're breaking out of that mold. I think this is the best yeah. of what women are doing. So we're now awake. <laughs> yes, we have been awakened <laughs> finally. Um, but how do we? How do we manage those jittery feelings, whether it be imposter syndrome, like, oh my goodness, I'm in the room. Should I even be in this room? Or yeah. those, I'm afraid and I don't know how to get over that mountain of fear to be able to really hit things strong and 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 score a, a bonus or um, go after that dream or whatever it is. Because I think the hard thing about training your mind is that you have to be disciplined but a lot of people don't know how to deal with the the ups and downs of fear and anxiety the jittery feelings so yeah. what do you say to that how do we manage that so i'm going to speak from my perspective and my experience and um first of all i would like to say that every single person goes through it everyone even michelle obama everybody yeah. you know everyone has even oprah everyone has a moment where they would have jittery feelings, yeah. but it's how you handle it, how you respond to it is what takes you further. Mm -hmm. And what I have been able to do successfully well, and I stress the word successfully well, because it's what's working for me, yeah. is the fact that I have learned to be able to calm myself, breathe and speak nicely to myself. Okay. It, and, I, and I say speak nicely to myself because it's very, very important we acknowledge the conversation that we have with ourselves internally okay. because there are so many people out there that are ready to pull you down and ready to mm -hmm. say that you shouldn't be in this room you're not qualified you're not this you're not tall enough you're not short enough you're not xyz there's so many people doing that for you already so yeah. it's important to have an internal conversation where you can speak to yourself and calm yourself down and believe this or not sometimes i even rub myself on the back and say to myself that, Tewa, you're doing well. You know, calm down. You're the best at what you do. You are worthy. You are the value. Not that anybody else is the value. So I speak affirmations to myself every single time. People that know me know that I'm an affirmation junkie because mm. I strongly believe in, you know, in speaking to yourself calmly and breathing as well. I have been in, you know, in situations or rooms where I have thought oh my god what am I doing here and then you know especially when I'm about to get on stage and speak and I'm like oh my god there are thousands of people here the tongue really is dry everything exactly exactly and what I do is just you know remind myself of who I am by speaking nicely and softly to myself and mm -hmm. then I breathe I take deep breaths in from my stomach out, breathing through my mouth. And, you know, you might think, or people might think, uh, what is she talking about breathing? But it is very, very important. Mm. When I breathe, I calm myself. And then all the, you know, before you get on stage, your voice gets a bit shaky and you're like, you know, when I do that, I am more relaxed. 
-hmm. And then I go on there and do what I need to do from a clearer perspective. These are the things that I do that work for me. Mm. because the jitters will come remember that a lot of the things that you're going to do in future you've never done them before so you're moving away from your comfort zone so the jitters will always always come even if you get a million pounds today tomorrow you will want you know a billion pounds and then the jitter will come like can you do it can you achieve it so you need to speak to yourself and calm yourself down and another thing that I say to myself every single time is, is that Tewa you've done harder things before you wow. can do. So I speak to myself and I calm myself down and I meditate a lot as well. I mean, these are things that I, I, I try to, you know, I, I try to speak about as often as I can so people can understand it, that it's not hard, like it's hard work that you have to, you know, do X, Y, Z and blah, blah, blah. It's all about speaking to yourself and calming your mind quieting your mind using affirmations as well so it's it's very very important and i've you know taught my children from a very young age as well learning to speak to themselves because the the the, the most conversations you would have with anybody is with you mm -hmm. you yourself and you so you might as well make that conversation of things you would want to hear soothing things that you want to hear because it's not all the time you can pick up the phone and call someone and say you know say something nice to me mm -hmm. or call your mom or your dad you yeah. know to say something. you have to learn to speak to yourself and i always say that you know when you speak to yourself believe the words you say to yourself so that they would manifest as your reality mm -hmm. calm yourself down when the jitters come know that they are normal you are not being abnormal. And it's not a it's not a, a, a loss of self-esteem thing. No, it happens to the best of us because wow. we are humans. Remember, Jesus had a jittery moment. Mm. You know, I, I speak from a, a Christian perspective because I'm a Christian, but I'm sure there's you know something in the in the Quran that talks to the Muslims uh, as well about you know what the, the what Muhammad did or you know people in the Quran did. But remember at one point, Jesus said that he wishes God will take this cup away from him. Yeah. That was a jittery moment. And then eventually we had to come to terms with, okay, this is what I've been sent to do. This is what I'm going to do. It is well, it mm -hmm. is done. Yeah. So it happens to every single one of us because we're humans. But the words you say to yourself will determine how you, you know, go, get above or you fall down and go back into your comfort zone that you're used to. Absolutely. So you need to learn to speak to yourself. And I do that to myself all the time. I mean, when I'm doing, when I'm on the, on the way to the big events that we do in all the things that I do, I'm always calming myself down and speaking to myself, speaking lovingly and nicely to myself because I'm the best person to speak to myself, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so I would say, you know, yes, the jitters will, the jitters will come, but learn to speak nicely and affirmatively into yourself, into your life, into your work, whatever you do. Meditate as often as you can. Make sure that you're breathing, you know, in a, in a situation where your heart is pounding so fast and everything. Just breathe. Just breathe. <laughs> that should be a teacher. <laughs> Just breathe. <laughs> Just breathe. Yeah. So those are my, you know, those are what's helping me. They've mm -hmm. helped me in the past and I'm, you know, guaranteeing that they would help anybody that really, really disciplines themselves. You said that word earlier, very important. Disciplines themselves to do that. Yeah. Stillness, meditation, affirmation. Yeah. I think these are powerful tools, really, really powerful tools. Really. Um, and I think that especially because sometimes as human beings, we get one, right? And we're like, okay, I'm doing this part right. But we realize that we have to do the dance. We have to do all the moves at once. It's kind yeah. of like um, uh, there's, there's a specific martial arts that they do. And it's it's very rhythm in it. Rhythmic? Rhythmic. <laughs> <laughs> it's very rhythmic. And um, you have to use all the parts of your body to defend yourself. And... Um, some it's I almost imagine these tools like that you're marrying the meditation with the breathing with practicing stillness um because actually when you master one you realize that the other ones come in to support that yeah. one and it strengthens yeah. you and your mind and how you're thinking in this moment yeah really, really mm -hmm. you got it Mm -hmm. um I I love I love this conversation I live for conversations like this <laughs> um so 
one thing I wanted to ask about was if you saw yourself as successful um, then and now, and why? And if not, why? Right, okay. So not to toot my own horn <laughs> or anything, but I do actually see myself successful. I, I, I see myself, you know, with my mind's eye in the success that I still desire to be, which is in my future. And I'm thankful for the success that I am today. So I appreciate today and I'm thankful for the success in the past as well. So with me, and um, this was even before my mindset styling um, work that I do. I've mm -hmm. always believed that every single part of my life is, uh, is a journey and it's a success story. Okay. And the fact that, you know, number one, I'm alive. Number two, I'm able to do whatever it is that I want to do in a day, be it work or play or whatever it is. I believe that is a success. Mm -hmm. So success you know, to me is different from how you would say success is to you. Okay. So everybody has, everybody has their own meaning of success. Yeah. So, but for me personally, being able to do the things that I've wanted to do in the past, I've been lucky to say that, you know, to, 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 to put my goals on paper, like, you know, one that I will set as an example is get married by the age of 24. And I did, you know, wow. get married to the person that would be able to support me with my you know career goals and and I did have x number of children well actually I wanted three but I didn't in the end so I wanted to you know, do this with my with my magazine and I'm doing that do this with other things that I'm doing and I'm doing them fair mm -hmm. enough you know I might not hit all the goals that I want to hit every year but a good majority of them to God's glory, I do hit. So yeah. I would, and then the ones that I don't hit or the or the, the challenges that have come my way, I take them as a learning opportunity of how I can do things better, you know, how I can be even more successful. So I count that as winnings and I count those as blessings as well. So at this point, I appreciate this moment. I am thankful for this moment. I, I, you know, I am joyful in this moment, in the success that I have in this moment, knowing that there is so much more on me that God wants to release onto the earth through me. So, wow. you know, and when I say that successful in the future is that, you know, with any, anything that we're all doing, we have to be able to see with our mind's eye where we want to be, the vision for ourselves, the vision for our lives. And the vision I see in my mind's eye, oh my God, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you're talking a lot about gratitude there. Do you oh, feel yes. like, um, because being able to see yourself and see your success is, do you think that gratitude is contributing to that? So you're able to appreciate everything that you were and everything you are today um, through practicing gratitude and knowing that all of this has fallen into divine order. I, it, fi it all figured out in the end. It's kind of like my dad loves to talk about Murphy's Law and how <laughs> even though things go wrong, it all works. Yes, 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 gratitude. You know what? In the past, for the past three or four years, even though I do say my, you know, I do say prayers for what I want, my majority of my prayer time is thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you is all I say. Because really and truly, when we are grateful for what we have now, we put ourselves in the position to receive more things to be thankful for. The law of attraction, whatever it is you focus on, you get more of. And yeah. God is, you know, God has, has done it in a very, very beautiful way where he said, come to me with thanksgiving. You know, yeah. and with with joy, with praise in your heart, and when you're doing that, you it's a guarantee, it's a sure banker that you will have more experiences to go to him with thanksgiving and praises about. So I I strongly believe in that, and I practice that as well. I practice what I preach. So I'm all about the gratitude. I'm all about appreciating, especially the moment as well. So appreciating this moment, because this moment is our guarantee. You know, this moment is the only moment we're guaranteed of, not yesterday, because yesterday is gone and the future hasn't happened yet. But this moment, so if you're living your, your if you're living your day and you're appreciating and thanking God for this moment, you would realize that as the moment goes, you know, each moment, each hour, you are happy and you're excited 
created because new things are unfolding into your life. So gratitude does pay, you know, a huge play a huge, huge part of my life. And it's it's like the it's like, you know, almost I won't say a hundred percent, but almost a hundred percent of what I do. Wow. giving thanks and another thing that I have to add to it is remember you know in the bible and I keep referencing the bible because I'm a Christian it's right here. It's we have to hear about the bible here <laughs> it says that when you pray you pray that you, you you pray believing it's done so when you go into that prayer mode wherever it is the corner of your house into that closet whatever it is you're praying giving thanks for what has already been done. Because once we ask, it is given. So we're not praying and begging God and saying, God, please do this. No, because it's already done. So instead, you bring your prayers with thanksgiving. So you are excited. You're saying it and you're excited because it's already done. So if you understand that concept, you would understand and see how miracles do happen on a daily basis. Because we believe what Whatever it is we have gone to God in prayer has already been done. So yeah. you thank God for it because it's already done. Thank God. Let us all thank God. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> it's already come. It's been done. Yes, because it's already done. Yeah. It's already done. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Okay, I'm just gonna pause very quickly because so um I I think that your life is a really beautiful example and especially your story really beautiful example of the power of what you can achieve when you are decided um when you stick to the process of being disciplined in your mind on on the things that you will do such as breathing the meditation affirming yourself really really intentionally doing that i have to add intentionally doing that, doing that. Yes, um, and those things are really, really key practices to doing the hard thing of transforming your mind or renewing, your, Christians would say renewing your mind or um, other people would say building your mind or fixing a new paradigm. So what would you say are the three key lessons that you try to um teach people from your life because I'm sure that you mentor I'm sure that people are always asking you questions how did you get here how did you do this what are the what are the three key lessons that you tend to give people um three key lessons number one believe in yourself mm. believe in yourself if you don't believe in yourself nobody would I mean when I go into meetings and I'm talking about whatever project is on the table a lot of people say that you're so excited when you talk about it and you can, you, they can feel that vibe. It's yeah. because I strongly believe in the product that I'm, you know, that I'm talking about and I strongly believe in myself. Yeah. So number one is believe in yourself. Number two is you have to speak to yourself nicely. Mm. I would say you have to speak to yourself and make sure that you can visualize and see yourself with whatever it is that you want. If you can't see it in your mind, you cannot hold it in your hands. So you have to be able to see yourself with what you want. So visualizing and, you know, affirming, speaking to yourself. And the number three thing is take action. And when I say take action, I'm not talking about taking any action. I'm talking about taking aligned action and taking inspired action. Okay. When you take aligned action and inspire action, you're not taking that action from a, oh gosh, this is such a hard work perspective or point of view. You're taking that action because you've got a word and you are now working on that word. And these words come to you when your mind is quiet, when you've been able to visualize where you want to go to, yeah. then the ideas start coming to you. So yeah. whatever ideas come to you, take action. Yeah. Fair enough. Some of the action you take might not yield the results you want, but that's one less way to do something. Yeah. You understand what I mean? So take action. It's, you know, yes, we have to do the mindset work of visualizing where we want to be speaking to ourselves, meditating, imaginating, um, sorry, imagination and things like that. But you still have to do the work of taking that action. Mm. You still have to do that work. And everything works hand in hand. Because if you're taking action from not before seeing where you want to go to, nothing's going to happen. You know, you can't get on the road and saying that you're going out. Where are you going to? 
Where are you going to? So yeah. you have to have a mental map of where you're going to mm. so that you can now take action based on what you have seen in your mind's eye. Those are my three key things. And you have to believe in yourself. You have to visualize and see yourself where you have where you're going to and speak to yourself. Mm. And you have to take aligned and inspired action. I I'm taking notes. Even <laughs> ladies, I hope that you're listening and taking notes. I'm taking mental <laughs> notes um, because what you're saying is so true. I remember when I was doing my, I think I was doing my A-levels and my older sister is 11 years, my senior. And I was talking about, oh, it's hard. I know I'm doing it, but it's hard. And she was like, sis, people have done this before and they've done excellently. There's no mm -hmm. way that you can't do it yourself. And mm -hmm. I think in reference to that self-belief, sometimes all you have to do, not in a comparative way, but all you have to do is look outside and, and see that people are achieving what it is that they're designing. Yeah. So yeah. it's possible if others can, they're not, as my mom would say, they don't have two heads. heads. Exactly. <laughs> they exactly. don't have two heads. Exactly. Um, but that inspired thought and inspired action is so true because it must that there's a there's a rhythm to progress and to the success that we all desire and it will look different for all of us but it has to come from that place of inspiration it comes out of our bellies and like out of the mind's eye yes. um, because god will give us that vision but then he will now um he will give you the resources and the resources won't look ready um they will, look, mm -hmm. they will look like if you're looking for a chair it will be a tree he gives you a yes. tree and so you have yes. to use the mind's eye the vision to begin to chisel away and build that chair um mm -hmm. that table, whatever it is so i really really love that um and those are really powerful lessons and i think for me as I mature, as I'm learning and, and as I grow, I'm discovering more and more that these things are simple, but they're mm -hmm. not always easy. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to take away the this and it's Instagram life, you know, fake life that, that is driving a lot of us. A lot of us feel like these things happen overnight and they don't. Um, Tewa is talking about how She's put in 18 years of work. This wasn't overnight, but the fruit of her life um, is the consistent decision to, yeah. to put her mind in a place where she's still, where she's looking for inspired revelation about the direction she's going in. And mm -hmm. I, you can't go wrong if you're following those principles. You, you will find yourself at the destination that God has for you. So I love yeah. that. I love that. Um, we're rounding up now and I, I know that this has been an amazing session i don't want to take too much of your time um but i just want to ask you two more questions okay so, just two just two because i i feel like i've i've you know gone here and there but just two more questions um what has been your greatest achievement so far or your biggest win and I'll, I'll, I'll let you answer that one first. Crisis achievements so far. Um, I don't know, there's so many. Um, okay, maybe the number one thing would be um, my children, the way I have, you know, with God's help, obviously, the way I have been able to groom them mm -hmm. and their mindset yeah. you know, to, be, to be the the great human beings that they are yeah I would say that's you know that's 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 one of them that's one of them um another would be you know the impact that I've been able to make so far and I'm continuing to make in in the lives of women business owners and you know the impacts we're making in terms of um offering free screening to women for cervical cancer mm -hmm. those are huge for us and you know, it's all about empowering women. It's all about supporting women. And I am making an impact in that, in that sphere. So I would say, yes, that's an impact. Did you say three? <laughs> yeah, yeah, three. Um, was it? Okay, so maybe the third one is me being able to rule my mind. 
Mm. Yeah, me also being able to rule my mind, actually, you know, um, I have come to understand the fact that um, we evolve every single, you know, every time we're evolving, we're growing, we're becoming, and, um, and you being able to grow to a point where you now understand that, okay, when I was younger, I would have done this differently. And when I say younger, I don't mean younger in age. I mean, younger in the awakening. Right. So to speak. I would have done this differently, but now I'm doing this, you know, you know, I'm, I'm responding in a way that makes me feel good. Okay. I'm responding in a way that takes care of my mindset. So I think that is, you know, that is a great achievement as well. And obviously with that, it, it transcends to every other thing that I do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, me living my book, you know, I have a book called Rule Your Mind. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm living my work. Yes, I do. I have. Oh my goodness, guys! I'm gonna plug that in the link in the description. Please go. It's available available on Amazon. So you know, me, me living my life, me living my book, being able to rule my mind to live the life that I desire. I think that, in fact, that is the biggest one. (laughs) That is the biggest one. Just win, yeah. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. and I said, I think that you can't not get to the destination you have envisioned if you're able to rule your mind mm-hmm. um you may not get it get to that destination the way you plan um but you would definitely get there definitely yes you would definitely 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 <laughs> i love that i love that okay the power of three i've, I've been doing the power of three throughout this podcast i don't know if you <laughs> i've been paying attention i think it helps things stick um you know just three quick wins or three ways I think it always it always works. It helps things stick. So, um, and what's your advice to women who, similarly to you, are making that transition from one career path into another? Um, business owners looking to progress. And um, what advice would you give to them specifically? Because we have a mixed bag of listeners. Some of them are entrepreneurial, some of them are creative. And I think that you're a good picture of marrying the two because um, Exquisite is a very creative platform, but it's also incredibly entrepreneurial as well. And you're speaking about lifestyle and, and um, fashion. So what's your advice for women that are making a similar sort of transition out of this, something more technical or um, uh, scientific into a different career path like yeah would I would say learn okay keep learning and look for look for mentors or coaches look for look for people you know that are doing something in line with what you want to do and learn from them read books I'm a you know book junkie I'm always reading I'm always learning because I suppose the learning thing came from my mom Mm. when I was young she was always saying your education is your property nobody can take it away from you so I've always you know I've always thought oh my god if I learn something it's it's with me for life so you know so it's a good way to 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 keep learning so I would say learn because we don't know it all Mm. and we need to learn either from people who have been there or on the job, you know, doing whatever it is that you've done and you see that, you know, it's not a way to go and changing changing the way that you do things. But definitely find a mentor. I have mentors who inspire me, people that are doing things that I'm currently doing, but on a grander scale. And I'm like, that's where I want to get to. What is this person doing? What is their routine? What are they reading? You know, what are they, you know, things like that. So find, find mentors learn keep learning you can never ever ever get enough learning keep learning and you know I said it earlier I believe in yourself you know also speaking to yourself those are very very key key things and um I want to say this as well that everybody starts from a blank page Mm. nobody starts knowing it all nobody starts you know nobody gets into this world and starts running (laughs) You have to crawl, then you walk, then yeah. you run. Yeah. So it's one step at a time, pace yourself. Don't rush yourself. Mm. You will get there. But believe in yourself and look for people that are, you know, going in the direction that you want to go to. 
and just learn from them. Read books, podcasts, you know, podcasts. <laughs> podcasts. Yes, yes. <laughs> podcasts. Please yes. do. watch videos, learn, 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 learn. And yes. um, I have to say this as well, that it's not just about learning as well. You know, acquiring knowledge is not just about that, but it's about applying the knowledge yeah. that you've acquired. Yes. Very important. A- applying the knowledge that you've acquired. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. This has been such a great conversation. I think even for myself, I'm just like, oh, yes, breath of fresh air. Um, it's always inspiring. And, and I don't take it for granted to be able to speak to women like yourself, because I think that um, we're in this sort of revolution of womanhood and and what it looks like and um, redefining what it looks like to be successful and also pioneering doing hard things and and doing the work that gets us to um, the top of the mountain climbing whatever it is yeah. um so i'm so happy that you joined me once again thank you so much for joining where can we you find me. you <laughs> Right, so I'm everywhere, <laughs> so to speak. So personally, I'm on Instagram as my name, Tewa Onosoya. Yeah. I also have a personal website, which is te- www.tewaonosoya.com. We have four websites with my <laughs> with my different work. <laughs> I don't know, do you want me to mention all of them? <laughs> no, we can list those back in the, in the description. Okay. And you can also find Exquisite Mag as well. Yeah, there's Exquisite Magazine. So there's exquisitemag.com, there's eloyawards.com, there's the smearitafrica.com yeah. for the cervical cancer arm. And um, I also have a YouTube channel actually that I'm, you know, I haven't posted in a while, but yeah, as me, Tewa Nelson. So when you Google me, you will find quite a lot of information very about fine. me as well as, yeah. Mm-hmm. He is very, very findable. Thank you so much for joining me again. Um, and as I always say, if you're enjoying this episode or have enjoyed it, please make sure you like, share and subscribe and also leave a review or um, leave a message in the comments on the, the most powerful thing that resonated with you from this episode. And we will see you next time on the Becoming Lovely podcast, exploring how Kingdom women do hard things.